Hey guys, it's Bree. I know I haven't made a video in a while, but I was going to start a web series called How Do We Function? And this was supposed to be the first video. However, it went <laughs> a little awry, as you will see. And so I had to make it a podcast. And so this is just a little snippet of a video of me right now. But the interview is with Henry Ehrlich, and you can listen to the rest of it here. It's about 49 minutes long, and you can just plug it into your ears or listen to it on the drive to work or at work or before you go to bed, anytime you want. And I'm just very sorry that it's not actually a video, but the next ones will be. And I hope you enjoy. Bye. Hello, everyone. Um, it's Brianna, as many of you know. And I wanted to welcome you to our first interview on how do we function, where we'll be talking about skin health and different ways we can combat our skin conditions without the use of chronic steroids. And sadly, our first interview has gone a little awry already, but we have author Henry Ehrlich with us. Can you say hi, Henry? Yes, hello. How are you? <laughs> We have him on our phone because we couldn't get our Skype to work, which is sad because I would love to have introduced him personally and not through my little uh, telephone here. But uh, how are you today? I'm fine. It's a little chilly here in New York, but otherwise it's just fine. Thank you. <laughs> um, how are you in Florida? <laughs> very sunny, sorry to say. Um as well, you can't see, but it's probably at least 75 degrees outside. Lucky you. <laughs> but um, Henry works, um, is a good friend of Dr. Lee's in New York, who works with uh, traditional Chinese medicine and allergic disease. And so, Henry, I just wanted to see if you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, uh, sure. Um, I used to be a, a corporate speechwriter uh, before I got involved in the subject of, uh, of allergies, broadly speaking. I began my allergy career uh, when I ghosted a book for my cousin, who was a distinguished pediatric allergist and a colleague of his. Um, and then we... After when we published the book, we decided to uh, create a website as well called AsthmaAllergiesChildren.com. And um, one of the first people I met um, was Dr. Shu Min Lee, and I uh, I went up to Mount Sinai to meet her, and she showed me some of her research, and I was immediately. Uh, captivated by what I saw. Um, she, her early work as a clinician was with eczema, and I know how bad pediatric eczema can be. She showed me some pictures of a little girl's feet in the space of a few months that went from being painful and bleeding to look at, and in the course of a few months' treatment, were transformed until by the end she was painting her toenails. You know, I raised a daughter, I know what toenail polish means, and it convinced me that even though traditional Chinese medicine was quite alien to me, that it was an extraordinary, it presented an extraordinary opportunity to treat allergic diseases, broadly speaking. Uh, Dr. Lee also treats food allergies, and she treats asthma with her uh, medicines. The, um, she has this unique position of having been trained in both uh, Chinese and Western medicine back in the 1970s and, and early 80s in China um, to be able to adapt these very old remedies to modern uh, standards of scientific proof. And she, in her lab up at Mount Sinai, she works on refining these things, um, and then on Saturdays and Sundays, she treats patients. So there's a continual virtuous loop be between her practice and her research. Um, 
I wrote two books about her. One of them, she's my co-author, and we continue to work together very happily. Uh, but after four years, of course, I don't see her very often. If I had to be in the same office, it would be different. But I have the good fortune of working at home while she's in her lab. She but sounds like a very busy woman. Yes, very busy. Well, so. on that note, um, especially because my first question was to be uh, how you got interested in her work, so thank you for answering that already. Yes. Um, I've read some of your book, co-authored with her, uh -huh. and like you said, she's both Western and Eastern uh, medicine, and what would you say were the different approaches between the two? Well, the, philosophically, the biggest difference is that uh, Chinese medicine uh, seeks to treat the whole patient, not just the, the symptoms. Uh, the, um, you know, as, as it is described in the literature, it's a kind of a mind-body thing. Uh, it, uh, symptoms in one part of the body are ascribed to uh, problems in other parts of the body. And some of that is quite alien to me, and it is to this day. You know, I don't know whether something is rising from the liver or descending from the kidney. Um, whereas in uh, Western medicine, doctors look at the, at the symptoms, and especially as medicine is currently practiced, they kind of leap to the first conclusion that they're prepared for. I, um, you know, I was writing my book, and if you recall uh, the chapter where I wrote about this, um, I quoted a Harvard uh, physician named Jerome Groupman, who writes for The New Yorker, uh, to the effect that, um, well, he, he, he gives several examples of cases where three different specialists diagnosed his uh, problems in his hands uh, three different ways, all of which they wanted to operate on the next day. And, of course, that's surgery, but uh, to a great extent, doctors still uh, profile you. Western doctors, uh, they don't have time to listen to you. They don't have time to uh, listen to your full story. Uh, Dr. Renata, Renata Engler, uh, who is a very distinguished retired uh, colonel in the United States Army, but, but a, one of the senior physicians at Walter Reed Medical Center for most of her career, said to me when I was interviewing her for this book that, that doctors have lost the capacity to listen to patient stories. And she's been a big adherent of Dr. Lee because, in great part, Dr. Lee's uh, approach is to listen to the patient, to take the whole patient into account, and to treat the various uh, symptoms uh, in a kind of a harmonious way with a variety of different kinds of medicines, uh, not just oral medications, but uh, topical medications to uh, salves and ointments and baths to soak in so that you get the maximum uptake of all these herbal uh, ingredients. Well, that's, so there. No, that's amazing. And I really, I mean, going through Redskin Syndrome has broaden my spectrum and, you know, diving into research, it really does show that we are, we are one big machine and you can't just look at one part and right. think that you can just fix that, that one part when it actually is probably connected to many other things inside the body. So yes. I, I think that's really well, interesting for Eastern medicine. Yeah. Well, you're... Red skin is, is also ascribed to uh, topical steroid use, is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, well, you know, one of the interesting things I've learned about uh, Dr. Lee's uh, treatments, uh, particularly for uh, asthma, where I go into this at the greatest length, but um, 
you know, the, the steroids are a very valuable tool as long as they're not overused. And, and uh, you know, they, they achieve dramatic, often dramatic uh, improvements in inflammation, but then when you stop using them, it comes back. Um, they also have uh, psychological effects that are actually uh, traceable in the blood. You know, there's there are, there are molecules in the peripheral blood that are that equate with uh, anxiety and depression, and those are both present in um, steroid users. And uh, and of course, if you're you know severely asthmatic, or you're pretty depressed anyway. Well, part of that is is because your life stinks. You know, you you can't breathe properly, and part of it is because it's creating this this blood chemistry problem and that, you know, you, you achieve remission or relief from the uh, inflammation, but those chem with the steroids, but those also have some, create some, some problems in the peripheral blood as well. And, um, and her asthma medicine, uh, is, has been shown in clinical trials in China to not only relieve the inflammation as dramatically as, as systemic steroids do, you know, of course those are much more powerful mm -hmm. even than the topical ones, but they achieve that uh, remission from inf inflammation without the same biochemical effects on the blood that, that equate to mood disorders. So it's pretty dramatic um, to me. and. And I enjoy uh, studying this and following her research all the time, as I do. So, uh, well, a lot of us in the Redskin Syndrome community have been picking up your book and reading about it, and that's what I found really interesting was that her approach and her protocol has a lot of the same benefits as steroids, but actually has more of a benefit for not having some of the repercussions that steroids bring. Yeah, right. Yes, well, that's a, that's, that really is an extraordinary um, a benefit. And, and believe me, I am uh, as, I, I'm as amazed and delighted as anybody could possibly be. And I was raised in a family with, you know, several doctors, and, and we always thought that, if you know if allergies were ever cured at Mount Sinai, it wouldn't be a Chinese doctor who would do it. Um, but uh, but the the long history of treating diseases in Chinese medicine is really uh, one of the great um, stories, to my way of thinking. Um, the uh, you know, the, the fact is that they have been treating these these problems for thousands of years. I am my, my favorite factoid about her eczema treatment, which is very, very dramatically effective, is that it was concocted during the, the uh, Tang Dynasty, which was you know, almost 1,500 years ago, and it was it was an era in which there were many, many wars. And so the Chinese doctors, in order to treat the burns and wounds incurred in war, uh, came up with these herbal uh, treatments, and, and Xu Min Li, who was very, very modest, says, I didn't invent that, I just read a book. And that's the way she, she addresses you. This is a woman of extraordinary uh, confidence and... Uh, and and she confidence and humility. Humility, yeah. arrogant about her. She's just a lovely person. So. Well, I'm jealous that I've never met her yet. Hopefully, I, I will one day. Chance. <laughs> um, well, one of the questions I had concerning it being traditional Chinese medicine is, how does that work with the FDA? Like, are there hurdles with them? All right, we're back now, so sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, 
we were talking a little bit about the FDA and right. yes. what all that entailed. There's a special uh, part of the National Institutes for Health called the National uh, Commission on Complementary and Alternative Medicine. And Dr. Lee's formulas are the most advanced formulas uh, created in the history of that agency um, and it's the National Center for sorry National Center for complementary and alternative medicine and her her asthma drug and her food allergy drug are the most advanced uh, formulas created under the terms of that rule so even while she's using the, these herbal formulas in her private practice, um, she is also uh, pursuing research um, a, a according to very, very strict government protocols. You know, first, you have to prove that they're safe, then you have to prove that they're effective, and then you have to prove that they really, really work. They're in you know, phase one, phase two, and phase three. Um, and she's conducted uh, clinical trials on that basis. There's a problem with, uh, with um, herbal medicine and the, you know, the, the standard FDA, you know, double-blind, placebo-controlled thing. Um, the, you know, the, the, with big clinical trials, you, you start very small with a very homogeneous uh, set of patients, um, and also usually they, they're people who are not really all that sick, and uh, they try the um, the drugs out just to see if they're harmful, and then you move on to uh, to the efficacy of phases, and you expand the um, the trial population a bit more uh, and you try to see if it works. Now, with allergies, with food allergies, um, they're usually accompanied by uh, other, you know, comorbid uh, conditions, um, eczema, asthma, uh, allergic rhinitis, which is, you know, nasal allergies. Um, there's, there's usually a, a complex set of uh, conditions that you have to try to treat and in standard clinical trials you only you only test one thing for one thing and if you have all these complications then you're usually excluded from uh, from those trials well dr. Lee is not content with that uh, with those strictures because most of her patients are small children and she really is determined that they not grow up with these terrible diseases. She treats children as young as a few weeks if they have a lot of terrible eczema right off the bat. Yeah, mm -hmm. This is another thing about uh, allergies is that when you start with eczema, it usually means that you're going to end up with, with other problems. Um, you know, food allergies have have now been uh, assessed for being, you don't, you're not in, induced to food allergies um, through ingestion. It's usually because there is skin contact with, with damaged infant skin. The allergens are introduced that way and that's why kids with eczema often grow up to have uh, food allergies. And so Dr. Lee is determined to stop what they call the atopic march or the allergic march, which is this progression from eczema to, uh, to food allergies to asthma and so forth. Uh, if you can repair the skin early enough, you can keep, you can, you can give it, give the skin back its barrier function. A lot of eczematous skin mm -hmm. is deficient in a, there's a gene mutation and there, there, it's, the skin is deficient in something called filaggrin, mm -hmm. uh, which is 
you know, used by the body to maintain the integrity of the skin barrier. So she tries to treat very, very small kids. Well, you can't have clinical trials with kids that young. But she's confident that her her medicines are very safe. Uh, they have been used, these combinations, for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, traditional Chinese medicine, herbal medicine, is commonly used in China, Korea, and Japan. Uh, they all three of those countries have uh, a long history of uh, using this stuff and also of, you know, of, of research on it. There's mm -hmm. a, a robust body of, of literature in those countries uh, showing the efficacy of, and safety of Chinese medicine. So that's, that's how she works. Now, the, the, in both the books that I've written about her, it uses it, uh, both titles. You know, for, the first one is called Food Allergies, Traditional Chinese Medicine, Western Science, and the Search for a Cure. And the other one is Traditional Chinese Medicine, Western Science, and the Fight Against Allergic Disease. Um, the That combination of traditional Chinese medicine and Western science is really crucial to all of this because she wants to prove what she does. You know, she says, I, we know that these things work, but we have to know how they work and we have to know how to make them better. So that's why she has this wonderful combination of weekend practice and, and full-time uh, research up at Mount Sinai, I'm always telling people, you know, she's a full-time scientist and a part-time healer. Um, and uh, her patients come to her on weekends and, and, and they, she looks at them and assesses what's wrong with them and makes her, uh, and talks with them about their complaints, finds out about their lives, and uh, comes up with a medication regime uh, accordingly. And it's been very, very effective for lots of people. Both books have case studies in them where uh, she's achieved uh, remarkable progress with these patients where years of, of uh, mainstream medicine uh, got people nowhere. I like to tell people that, um, well, I have a story about a, a young girl uh, in uh, Manhattan who was a patient uh, she, she, she had terrible eczema and asthma and food allergies, and she went to doctors everywhere from kind of Harvard to University of Virginia, and nobody could help her. And finally, you know, she ended up at my cousin's office in New York, and as I wrote in the book, you know, after examining her, he did the, uh, the New York equivalent of sending this girl to Lourdes, which was to asked Dr. Lee to see her, and Dr. Lee uh, achieved uh, such amazing results with her. Um, I know this girl's family quite well by now. I went to meet them because I, I wrote this case study up for the book, and uh, she um, uh, just, you know, one of the measures of, of allergic disease is, is the number of uh, IgE antibodies, those are the allergic antibodies, um, and she went from a level of uh, 6,000 to, now she's down to under 700, I think it's close to 500, but her her skin is beautiful. She went from you know, having what her friends thought were polka dot sheets on her bed at home because she bled mm -hmm. so much uh, at night. Uh, she now has perfect uh, skin. Um, she had terrible asthma. She's now a, a competitive cyclist, and she's gotten, she's restored or acquired ten foods for her diet that had been um, that had been, you know, precluded because of her allergic reactions. She's now added them to her diet and, and eats them uh, regularly. Um, she also once had a terrible allergic reaction to having a, a dog lick her uh, the last year. Her 
parents bought her a puppy, and she's very happy with this dog. So anyway, you know, I, there's a problem with with medicine. Um, you know, what I'm describing now is anecdotal. Doctors don't like anecdotes, uh, and and nor should they. You know, things should be proven in the lab. They should be proven in clinical trials. It shouldn't just be one, you know, uh, cure here and there because people do go into spontaneous remission for all kinds of things. But there are lots and lots of these uh, cases that um, uh, that are verifiable. Uh, there are more that are studied all the time. And I hope that, you know, we have the money in our national treasure chest to to be able to undertake some of these clinical trials because they these are wonderful uh, things for people. You know, the, um, you know, not to rhapsodize too much about her character, but uh, Dr. Lee says, I want these children to have their, their childhoods back. You know, you, you, you talk, if you talk about a food allergy cure that, you know, invented by uh, some scientist somewhere and it has to go through 10 years of clinical trials, you're talking about a, a small child, you know, being in, in college by the time the thing is ready to use, and that's not uh, tenable. Um, there are all kinds of other issues with Chinese medicine, you know, herbal medicine. I could go into those at great length, but just for the time being, you know, for practical purposes, I've written these two books. Uh, Dr. Lee herself has published over 100 uh, peer-reviewed articles, and these are peer-reviewed in very, very prestigious uh, publications. This is not uh, hocus pocus. It's not fly by night. You know, most of her articles are published in the Journal of uh, Allergy and, and Clinical Immunology, uh, which is the number one uh, publication of its kind in the in the world. Uh, most of her papers are published there. Many more in the Annals of Allergy and Clinical Immunology, which is another. That's kind of the number two. Um, so, anyway. You know, She's the real uh, deal. That's, that's <laughs> how I spend my time. This is what I think about all the time. <laughs> no, I mean, just from what you were saying about the little girl, um, yeah. because she has a protocol called ASHME, I believe it's called. That's Yes, that's her asthma. That's uh, anti uh, asthma medical intervention. I'm trying to, um, and it's, uh, yeah, the ASHME, right? Um, is that something that's also used for atopic dermatitis as well? No, well, it, it certainly would help, but it was invented specifically for, for, um, for for asthma, but the point of it, it was the point with all of these things that they all have, because the body is viewed in this kind of whole, you know, this whole whole bodily systems and um, the anti-inflammatory action of ashme also undoubtedly helps with the skin. You know, the, the, the most interesting thing about Ashmi is, to me, and this is new research that one of her, um, uh, one of Dr. Lee's uh, colleagues uh, published, is that it, there are three pathways involved in asthma, uh, three main uh, pathways. They're interleukin uh, four, interleukin five, and interleukin. Uh, Thirteen. Um, the they they all you know they they create uh, different roads to, to inflammation, and her uh, Ashmi treats all three of those um, pathways, whereas. The new monoclonal antibodies, which have been created at vast expense uh, by um, 
by some of the big pharmaceutical companies only treat one of those at a time. One of them treats two of them at a time, but nobody treats all three of them at a time, and that's what her medication does. And um, now the other thing that's very interesting about this, and this is a paper that I just read uh, not long ago for about the ninth time, because I, I now get to read all these papers, um, you know, the, in different stages, just, you know, I edit them, and they're, it's a lot of fun. Um, they, these, these, these pathways, the, these three ILs, uh, are all um, precursors to something called eotaxin. Eotaxin is a, is a uh, signaling compound that is sent out to summon um, a white blood cell called an eosinophil to inflamed tissue. And there, one of the ways you diagnose allergic asthma is you get somebody to hawk up you know, a bunch of, of mucus from their lungs and then you count the eosinophils. And if there are a lot of eosinophils in that mucus, then that is a marker for allergic asthma. There are other kinds of of asthma as well. It's not the only one, but it does. Um, if you, if this eotaxin isn't there, sending out the bad signal for the eosinophils to show up, then it's not likely that you're going to have um, this, uh, you know, this eosinophilic uh, asthma. You know, these white blood cells are very potent things, and they. Uh, were evolved uh, by nature to, to fight uh, parasites. You know, they're, they're, they're life-saving if you live in a in a, um, a parasite-rich environment when, without, you know, indoor plumbing and if you wander around and open latrines and so forth, you end up with parasites. If you swim in, you know, tropical rivers, you end up with parasites. And so these things are very, very good for that. But when you don't have the parasites to fight, you don't want these things there creating problems for you. And her medicine uh, by, makes sure that, the, that those lungs that are prone, prone to asthma don't uh, signal all this um, activity uh, associated with inflammation. It also works in other parts of the body too, uh, such as the esophagus, which is uh, often, which is, uh, is prone to a, another uh, food allergy uh, related disease called the eosinophilic esophagitis. Uh, and it's now kind of known as uh, asthma of the esophagus because the, me the physiological mechanism is is similar to that for, for allergic asthma. Um, anyway, so that, you know, Scott Sicherer, who's one, it was one of Dr. Lee's bosses at Mount Sinai, said something to me that was really good. He said, in Western medicine, we study the effects of one molecule on one other molecule. These herbal compounds, on the other hand, are multiple molecules that have effect uh, effects on multiple other molecules. So you you can see, you know, you, you can be taking uh, ashme, say, for allergic asthma, on the one hand, but then you can see that it also helps with other kinds of asthma that are associated with a different kind of white blood cell, or you can see that they help with um, with eczema, uh, with food allergies, uh, and even probably with with nasal allergies, and that they also have general beneficial effects on the overall health of the patient, because a lot of um, a lot of food allergy patients or a lot of allergy patients are also prone to a lot of infections. There's a an imbalance in the in the uh, the overall immune profile. You know, you've got too weak a uh, innate immunity against viruses and and uh, infections on the one hand, and too too great an activity on the allergic side of things. And so uh, these um, herbal med medicine 
methods that Dr. Lee has pioneered. You have a, a, an immunomodulatory effect. That is, they recalibrate an unbalanced immune system, and so you get all these uh, these peripheral uh, uh, health improvements. Um, so, and and with Ashmi, she's the only one that can prescribe this. Well, that's <laughs> that's a different story. It it's it is possible to create it by using her formula. There was a bootleg version of it that was sold, and uh, her patent was certainly violated. It was easier to enforce um, uh, trademark law than, again, than patent law, which is very expensive to enforce. And so uh, that version was taken, and they had to change the name. Mm -hmm. um, but it, this is not something that you routinely do. You know, you need the right uh, practitioner to do it. it um, it's not something I would encourage people to do, is to go to their local herbalist. And, um, but, but it can be done. So. Well, I mean, with, with Dr. Lee, you actually know where the ingredients are coming from, and if they're... Yes, that's very important. You know, the fact that she has uh, a um, she has access to the best uh, sources of herbs uh, in China. She also uh, and they're manufactured in China or in the United States according to uh, FDA standards of purity. And then she, since she has her lab up at Mount Sinai, they check them for, um, again, before they're uh, put into, um, into any patient's uh, bodies. Um, they check them for heavy metals, they check them for uh, consistency, um, they check them for uh, their, you know, their, their, the fingerprint of the, the um, active ingredients, you know, they can, they can look at these things. And I've got pictures of that in my book, the second book of the H HPLC um, uh, fingerprint of, of her stuff. You know, this is, this is not hippie medicine or anything. Mm. This is uh, very, very strictly uh, regulated by her operation. And, you know, you have to be, you do have to be very careful. I mean, you may have heard this before, but, you know, I, I know this from my friends at uh, Stanford Medical School, and they have told me that the the number one source of uh, patients in their uh, organ transplantation uh, department at Stanford um, for liver replacements, particularly, is uh, people have been taking um, herbal medicines that are adulterated with. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of toxins and it stores these organs. Well, with, with Dr. Lee's stuff, you don't have that. It's not fly-by-night uh, herbal medicine. It's the real thing. Well, I was going to say thank you for talking to us about all of this. It all seems very... Uh, I don't know, like something that we should have around more uh, and have readily available to us to tr to try and use because it's potentially something that, I mean, not to wipe Western medicine out, but it's something that's really rivaling the the Western medicine, I guess, philosophy of treating that one part of your body instead of looking at it as a whole. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I, you know, look, there are, there are great drugs that are created. That, you know, I'm not, um, you know, I'm particularly kind of captivated or, or fascinated with a new drug for severe um, atopic dermatitis or eczema, you know, and, and, and but it, it's, a, it's a monoclonal antibody, and the monoclonal antibodies are incredibly expensive, and and that is you know that the people 
people who have really bad atopic dermatitis, they don't care what you do as long as they have some relief, you know, from that yep. kind of napalm look on their their legs and, and arms. You know, they, they really do deserve some relief that's also, you know, that's often been, you know, a misery that's been lifelong for them. But, but developing those drugs is, is arduous, you know, and, and of course... You want the, the FDA to have strict uh, controls on, on the trials and all of that, but, you know, I don't know how you can deal with, you know, a lifetime of, of, uh, of shots every two weeks, which is what they're talking about, um, at, you know, $1,000 a shot. I mean, that's just a lot of money. And That's outrageous. <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, to be able to achieve some relief, and, and here's another thing about about this. Um, you know, most trials start with with older people. You know, and the first they're approved for you know ages 12 and up, and then then for six to 12, and and you know it's going to be a long time before those little they're going to get around to those little you know babies with horrible eczema, and. Um, and then, you know, you can start a kid on a thousand dollars every two weeks uh, shots when he's, you know, a year old, and that's a, a lifetime of of money <laughs> as well as misery. Um, it's better than the alternative of having, you know, skin that just kind of peels away like, you know, like molting feathers. But uh, but that's what we're up against, yeah. and, and so the uh, extraordinary uh, results that Dr. Lee has had with that particular thing is if it, it, if it were only eczema that she's been able to treat, it would be a loss, you know, but there's this whole panoply of other allergic diseases that she is also, um, and other immune uh, diseases, you know, that she, she's got doing work with... Um, irritable bowel problems and Crohn's disease. Uh, so anyway, I, I, I would love it if all your listeners would buy my books and, and read all about this stuff. You know, it's there. It's, some of it is very lively and some of it is, is slog because the science is there and I wanted to explain the science as well as I could. And um, it's all data-driven. Uh, there's nothing, there's nothing fly by night about this. It's all very, very, very scrupulously uh, backed up by um, the work of terrific mm -hmm. uh, scientists. Well, I'll, I'll definitely be putting a link for everybody um, to find your, your books. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm reading through them now, and they're very enlightening, especially with all just the incredible intricacies of our body and how it works and mm -hmm. uh, the different topics. You know, you have the asthma, you have irritable bowel syndrome, you have atopic dermatitis, and it's all right there. And as you said, it's mm -hmm. finite. It's not just, you know, wishy-washy or uh, just a story that someone's told. It actually has credibility and a foundation on her research, and it's... It has so much potential, and it's it's exciting to know that hopefully one day, you know, more people will be using things like Dr. Lee's um, research and protocols to help uh, with their skin, with their asthma, with their overall general problems, um, instead of having to resort to being on... A, a medication for years on end that's expensive or is doing detrimental harm, you know, weigh the pros and cons type of um, dealing that we've been facing, especially with topical steroids and steroids in general. So, Well, if any of your uh, listeners are uh, interested, we're having a, a conference in May in New York at Mount Sinai, and people from the public are invited. You know, they have to pay something because it's a long day and there are going to be expenses. But um, it, 
there, we, there are going to be, this is the second one of these that we've had. We're going to have researchers from, uh, not only from Sinai and NYU and uh, Columbia and New York, but also from the University of Virginia, Walter Reed, the NIH, the FDA, and MIT. You know, this is going to be, this is a heavyweight conference. It's going to be hosted by the head of uh, the Food Allergy Institute at the two heads of the Food Allergy Institute at Mount Sinai, who have both been, uh, you know, wonderful colleagues and mentors to Dr. Lee and has backed her research with the full weight of the prestige of that institution. So that's a that's a good deal. And if people want to to do it, you know, if they want, if anybody's interested in coming, I can share the registration information with no, you later on. That would be incredible. Yes, I will definitely get that from you. Do you know what the the exact date is in May? Yes, it's going to be May thirteenth. It's a Saturday. It's going to be a large delegation of people from China because uh, the Chinese having, you know, spawned this uh, marvelous researcher who got away to the, you know, who came to me to the United States to, to work after her training. And, and she is a, now viewed as, a, as an important uh, resource back in China. People there, the two medical schools in China and possibly a third are undertaking some of the clinical research on her, on her behalf. Um, so this is, this is kind of a, a marvelous thing. You know, uh, in November, um, I accompanied my cousin, Paul, the allergist, and I accompanied her to China for some meetings, and she's uh, a, a hero there. So uh, that's very gratifying. Um, and uh, you know, it means that the, you know, <laughs> it means that if we're all lucky, that the research will pick up the speed because it will have the backing of the Chinese as well as as American, you know, yeah. sources and and institutions, and this whole thing might be able to grow faster. It's a pleasure for me personally even to be party to to some of that. You know, these books are now re recognized uh, as key resources for promulgating this body of um, information to the world and telling these stories. So it's, well, thank you for writing them. <laughs> yeah. But, um... Okay. Awesome for having... Thank you for speaking. I know it didn't work out with the Skype. Um... But at least it was nice to hear your voice and all the information yeah. that you've been so kind to share. Okay, well, your listeners are better off probably not seeing me, but next time I'll shave and <laughs> put on makeup. Um, all right. Thank you very much, Brianna. It was really a pleasure. You're, you're a terrific person. So. No, thank you. Thank you, Henry, so much. And I will definitely, I'll share a link um, for everyone so they can have your books, and if you send me over the registration, I'll be happy to share that as well. Okay, well, it'll be ready in a couple of weeks. It's all being reviewed now, but um, but we're on our way with that conference. So. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you. Bye now. Bye, Henry.